Hey everyone, you are watching Jet Plays. I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com, a website about video games, board games, comic books, and other nerdy pursuits. And today on the docket, we're going to be playing a classic on the NES Classic. Of course, this is Metroid uh, by Nintendo, released in 1986. So, in 1986, I was still in diapers, and was I still in diapers? I was probably, st I don't think I was potty trained at that point. And by the time I started playing video games, this is one that all of my cousins and friends had. I believe, I'm pretty sure I rented this at some point, too. My memory of it mostly came from renting the game, and... I thought it looked great, and I loved the idea of this person. I didn't know she was a girl at the time. This girl in this space planet thing with these aliens that she was shooting, but I did not really understand how to play. And I mean, to be fair, I was by the time I was playing this, I was a toddler to a little kid, and all of the nuance of the labyrinth-like worlds and getting the keys or getting the items to open the doors and backtracking, all of that stuff completely lost on me. So in my eyes I was just kind of running around the world shooting stuff and... but it wasn't lost on me. Like at a certain point I realized that I didn't know what I was doing or where I was going because I would talk to people who did play the game and they say, oh yeah there's Mother Brain and you get... they were talking about weapons that I'd never even seen before and Clearly, I was doing something wrong for me to not know a number of... Pretty much not get out of the starting point. And so I've come back to this game a few times on and off over the years. It's been on... the assorted virtual consoles and whatnot. And... I ultimately never get very far. Um... With this one in particular, there are times when I can get the bomb, I can get the the missiles, and I can get the... Of course I can get the morph ball, um, the energy pack, but after that, I get completely lost. And that is until earlier today, I actually decided to watch someone else's Let's Play, and I discovered where the ice beam was. And that was really exciting for me, because that was the farthest I've been in this game in almost 30 years. So, now that I've gotten to that, I'm probably going to put in a bit more time to try and figure out where I should go. And maybe beat these this game for realsies. Yeah, my track record with Metroid games, even as I got older, not very good. And not to say that I don't like them. I vividly remember where I was when I first played the intro for Super Metroid, and I thought that was one of the greatest things I'd ever experienced in video games at the time, with the whole fighting the alien and the spaceships blowing up and the entire world shaking, like, oh my goodness. That was cool. Um, but unfortunately, never got very far. I'm pretty sure I have that on, well, I have the cartridge, and then I have it on Wii U Virtual Console as well, and... I never got very far in it. I think I I did get out of that main planet thing, but after that I just get lost. Inevitably get lost every single time and don't know where to go next. And I think part of the fun of a Metroid game is people love that openness and wanting to find stuff on their own. Me, I'm not very good at that and I'm not very good at directions, so it ends up, I end up getting to a place where I just don't know where to go, and I stop. And that's unfortunate. And it's probably more of a personal quirk than anything, although I think this game in particular, like, you don't even get a map screen. So how are you supposed to piece this all together unless you are drawing your own physical maps or reading a guide? Though for the, t like, I get it. Back in the day, they didn't have the the technology or the memory to incorporate that type of functionality so this is what you got and you figured it out and clearly a lot of people did and enjoyed it for what it was so oh geez and for what I played at the time I did enjoy it as well 
so it's not like it was completely lost. I enjoyed it enough that I would I, I would keep coming back to this game and this series again and again until I finally made progress. So we just got the missiles. Oh. And I'll show you... We'll play as much as we can play, um, or we can. I've got... I'm playing this during a little bit of downtime. Steph and I are going to see a movie this evening. And uh, right after we're done this Let's Play, um, as this thing is saving. We're going to go head out, catch Flick. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, so Super Metroid never got very far at all on that one. That's probably the one where I've made the least amount of progress. The one that really grinds my gears is Metroid Prime. Because that game was incredible. Loved it. Played so much of it. I actually got really far. Um, I was, as far as I know, I was on the verge of beating that game and... I just got lost towards the very end, and I could not piece it together, and so I just stopped. Really unfortunate, because, yeah, incredible game that I... In my heart of hearts, I should have beaten that game, and I didn't. And... I mean, I, I, I guess I could beat it again. I have... I'm pretty sure I have it on the Wii U Virtual Console, if I ever hook that thing up again. <laughs> Or if I even, or if I ever get the time to get around to playing that, because there's always new stuff to play, and I never have enough time to play what's on my plate. So, got to pick your battle sometimes. But that is one at some point in my life I would like to beat. It's on my bucket list. Uh, uh oh, this is bad. This is bad. Okay, get, get, get. Yeah, I don't think I've owned, like, I'm pretty, yeah, Metroid 1 Prime, I guess my other interesting tidbit on Metroid is that Metroid Prime 2 was the very first video game that I bought and did not play. I had gotten, I was working a full-time job at that, not a full-time, no. I was working in retail at that point. I had a part-time job. Oh no, I was right there. The energy canister was right there. Damn. Had a part-time... Oh, we have to go all the way back? Okay. Sorry, guys. So I was saying, I was making my own money, could buy my own games, and I loved that first Metroid game, Metroid Prime, so I bought the second one, and for whatever reason, I never got around to it, so I just had this brand new game sealed never played it. I think my brother ended up playing it and beating it, but I... Yeah, that would be end up being the first of many games that I would buy and not complete. It's tough. I mean, at a certain... It's funny, though, like how... As a kid, I scraped to play everything, and even games that sucked, I ended up playing because, well, I paid good money for this, or this is all I had, and... So I played it. I played a ton of Home Alone 2 on the SNES and it was awful. But I played it because I traded away some good games to get that game and I wanted to find the value in it, of course, which I ultimately never did. But I played it, and I played it more than Metroid Prime 2, which is maybe not as good as Metroid Prime 1, but considered an awesome game nonetheless. So we're gonna go track backtrack. We're gonna get to... let's get that energy tank and then we'll get the bomb and the ice beam and I think we will leave it there. Yeah, I think I've got enough time, just enough time for that. Maybe we go a little farther? Because of what... Oof. Earlier today, when I was playing, I have a save file going. I got... I had stopped right when I got the ice beam and... I couldn't figure out how to get out of the area where you get the ice beam, because there's a little trick to it that isn't obvious, but... Yeah, I stopped right there. And the other thing I didn't figure out at the time was how to toggle the ice beam off, but I don't know if that's a thing that you can even do, so... And trying to Google search for Metroid stuff, 
Metroid help? Actually really difficult on Google because it always pulls up the newer games first. I guess they all figured everyone's beaten this by now. <laughs> I should probably just use my missiles to clear these bad guys out. So how did you feel when you found out that Samus was a woman? I think maybe now, or at least if you were around at the time. Because I think now people don't care, or like it's not a big deal, but at the time when I first started playing this, I did not know that Samus was a she, and when I did, I found out through friends or magazines, and I thought that was kind of cool, but I wasn't like, yeah, girl power, it was just like, oh, okay, it's a girl under the robot spacesuit, cool. It didn't really change my experience at all, but I think when you think about where women in video games have I were at the time and where they progressed like the character of Samus was a real trailblazer and for that uh, kudos to Nintendo alright so we got the tank this is where I get okay um I think I'm trying to remember now I think I have to keep going this way I could be horribly wrong and I apologize or we have, do we go back? Might have to go back. But one thing at a time, we're gonna forge ahead. Because I think this is the way to go. It's another room like this, and I'm pretty sure you have to go up, and it's on the left. For the bomb. And then you go back and get the other thing. Get the ice beam. Because I think it's up here. This looks familiar. Okay. But yeah, I love the idea of kids in the 80s without the, the technology of, like, game facts uh, piecing this game all together and drawing their own maps on regular paper or graph paper to figure out where to go. Um, that's, like, so much extra work that a lot of games don't really demand that you do nowadays. And it's just awesome to think that there was a time when that was a thing. Ooh. Oh no. So another hang-up when I started playing this game again, I forgot that you need five missiles to break through that door. And so I got really stuck earlier, like preparing for this Let's Play, where I wanted to get, I wanted at least some base knowledge of where to go so it wasn't just me running around and shooting dudes with no purpose. And I forgot that the red door, I, I felt like I knew the red doors were for missiles, but I didn't realize you had to shoot five missiles, which seems excessive to me, but it is what it is, and now we're kind of in a situation where I'm short on missiles, and ah, we have to grind out for missiles, which is not fun. At least up our health, but... Come on, man. Just missiles, please. Anybody. Oh, I can't even... Man, this is not the way I wanted this video to go. But it is what it is. This is why we play it out. Is this going to be the one? One of these... What if... Okay. This may totally not work at all, but going to try. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Not at all. I wanted to shoot that one guy. Maybe he will drop missiles? Nope. Come on. Relying on the RNG gods on this one. Please? There we go. Okay, well, 
One more missile to go. And then we will get the bomb, finally. Um, I guess while I should be vamping here, in absence of, you know, actual gameplay action that is meaningful. Um, we talked about Super Metroid and Metroid Prime. I haven't played any of the other ones, so, okay, we got the five. Great. Uh, Metroid Zero Mission, or that bad 2D one by Team Ninja. I actually I played the demo of that in the store for what that's worth, and I didn't like it. But I don't even think that counts. All right, let's get the bomb. Yes. And I don't know if there's a secret there. I know we can roll in, but all right, let's go get. And I'll show you where I got stuck. Because the farthest I'd ever been in this game was it right now, where I've got the energy tank, the missiles, and the bombs. Oh, and more Paul, of course. So we gotta go back a ways. Uh. Yeah, for Super Metroid, I'm pretty sure I did a Let's Play on that on the site. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. I feel like I did, though. Oh man, there's too much going on here. The game's slowing down quite a bit. This is where I got tripped up. So, for years, I get to this room and say, like, oh, that's really weird that there's an enemy under there, but this is a solid floor and I can't get under. Until I watched a YouTube Let's Play uh, just this morning and saw that and was like, what? You can do that? And then, oh, this isn't actually acid, it's like a fake thing, and. That made me angry. Really did. And I understand game design of the 80s, and it's not like they didn't give me a hint, because there was that enemy in a place where there shouldn't be enemies, so I guess their hope was that that would be an indication of some weird stuff happening there. But as a kid, I didn't put that all together of like, maybe I should bomb here. And it's also not fair, because it doesn't give you any indication that you should bomb that specific tile. There we go, I think. Yep, Ice Beam. So I think we are going to wrap this up here. I'm going to noodle with this some more, and maybe we will check back in another point when I am farther in Metroid. But for now, uh, we are going to call it quits. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe on youtube.com slash jet in third person. Uh, check out the the streams when I'm on youtube.com slash jet FTW and of course check out the website in thirdperson.com for more articles and videos on video games, board games, comic books, and other nerdy pursuits. So until next time, I am Jet from in thirdperson.com and thank you for watching. <laughs>